All right, so per usual, we have to start with our dino of the day. Today we are talking about sauropods, which are the long neck, long tail boys, um, the largest animals ever walked on the face of the earth. So I thought we'd start at the beginning. So I know we mentioned a couple of days ago when you hear the term basal, basically means like early predecessor. So like a basal sauropod is one of the first sauropods, one of the first long neck, or at least the evolutionary steps just before what we would call a sauropod when we saw it. So our, we're going to start with our dino of the day being a basal sauropod. Uh, actually, it's a basal sauropodomorph. So sauropod with the word morph at the end, which just means shape. So it's basically like an early sauropod shape. And it is our friend right here. Let me find it. Uh, if you have not already, take a screenshot of our dino board, our bingo for the day. Godspeed trying to get a bingo. Today, our dino of the day. My picture's got all this. This is Ardonyx. A-A-R-D-O-N-Y-X. Ardonyx. It's a basal sauropodomorph. Here's another image of it. Uh, this is totally me and my pet, Ardonyx, at the Wyoming Dinosaur Center. You can see that it kind of looks like a sauropod, except for its arms aren't quite long enough. It may have been able to walk on four legs sometimes, but was habitually bipedal, which means it's always, almost always, walking on two legs, just like you and me. The other kind of crazy thing about Ardonyx, if you look at its skull, it kind of does look like you took like a theropod meat-eating skull, and you mashed it up with a sauropod, more plant-eating skull, and you get this intermediary step. So again, this is a very early sauropod. This is Ardonyx. One more time. Some right here, some right here. This is your challenge for our dino of the day drawing. Uh, my expectations are incredibly high, per usual, because you guys are phenomenal artists. I'm excited to see these. Now, also, I mentioned the bingo. Make sure you try to get a bingo. I thought, though, we would start today a little bit differently. And Christina, welcome Hi. back, my esteemed co-host. Christina, you don't know what's about to happen, but we're about to play a game uh, of which you are the target, Okay. So we are going to play one of my favorite games. It is called Dino or Not a Dino. Here's how it works. I am simply going to say the name of an animal, right? Some of them are actual real dinosaurs. Some of them are names I've totally made up. It is your job to say dino, if it's a dino, or not a dino, if it is not a dino. Oh boy, okay. This isn't like, this isn't like Woolly Mammoth. Oh, that's not a dino, because Woolly Mammoth actually exists. It's either a dinosaur or a name I totally made up. Now, I will say the name, and I'm going to give you like three, five seconds. So in the chat box, if you guys know if it is a dino or not a dino, drop some hints in the chat box for Christina. You can just write dino or not dino. Christina, are you ready to play dino or not dino? I am ready. So there are 15 animal names. So you, it's impossible for you to uh, get a tie. All you have to do is get better than 50% to win this game. You have to get eight out of the 15. Are you ready? I am ready. So ready. Wait, I'm going to remove a troll. Okay. Now I'm so ready. So ready. All right. While she's playing, I'm going to need Kelly, Grace, M. You guys, uh, you're, you guys are on troll watch. You are on, uh, I don't know, how, what do we call this? Troll watch? How do you say troll watch? Anyway, here we go. First animal, Christina. Edmontosaurus. Dino. What do people think in the chat? Dino or not dino? I feel good about this one. Feel I good? feel confident. Okay. And Montosaurus, yeah. check. That is a dino. Congrats. One of one. On your way. Second, Camarasaurus. Dino. Dino. Does everyone agree with him? Agree with her? Camarasaurus, dino? Yep, that is a dino. That is correct. These are going to get tougher. Number three, Euplocephalus. Dino. Dino. That is it. Wow, you're crushing the game right now. Euplocephalus. Uh, it's an ankylosaur. Got those bowling ball tail clubs. That was number three. Number four, Irritator. Not a dino. Irritator is a dinosaur. It is a type of spinosaur from Africa and is named for how difficult it was to remove from the rock from which it was found. It's literally called Irritator. So you are three and one. Next, Dilophoraptor. Dino. Not a dinosaur. Oh. I combined Dilophosaurus and Raptor to make Dilophoraptor. That's not a dinosaur. Three and two. Next one, Carnotyrant. Should I cheat and look at the chat? These people That's know not cheating. You can phone a friend by looking at the chat. Can you say the name again? Carno Tyrant. Carno Tyrant. Do, 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 
to not a dino not a dino correct not a dino you're four and two well done gargamel not a dino not a dino that is the bad guy from smurfs that is That's not right. a dino that is correct uh next anzu oh not a dino anzu is a dino chat is chat come on over raptor in anzu is a dino wow you started off strong but now you're four and four let's see if you can get going Danto Podius. Danto. Danto Podius. <laughs> That's a dino. That is not a dino. I'm sorry. Chat, chat, come on, help me out. <laughs> or maybe that one is. I actually forget about that one. <laughs> I think it is. Yeah, no, Jada says two foot. Like Danto Podius. That sounds like a great name. I'm not sure if I made that one up or not. Is that a dog you're holding? That's this not a dog. dog. Next one. Like, you're a little like past halfway dog. there. Next one, Iguano Colossus. Friends on Instagram, Iguano Colossus. Iguano Colossus. Iguano Colossus. No. No. Not a dino. Not a dino. Uh, that is a dino. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> you are now five for five. You have five left. You got to go three. You got to get three of these to win. If Sea Tacosaurus. That's a dino. That is a dino. It is spelled P S I T T A Saurus, but it's pronounced C Taco Saurus. Because they always have dino. they always have a look on their face like they just saw a taco and they're excited. Shouldn't we all? Yeah. Uh, ready, here we go. Ding dong a don. <laughs> That's not a dino. That's, that is not a dinosaur. All right, you're, you're, you're in the home stretch. Volcanodon. Volcanodon. Like volcano and then D O N. Yeah. Volcanodon. Uh, yes. That's a dino. That is a dino. I think you've just secured your victory. We got two more less left. Uh, <laughs> I can't even say this one. No Ming. No Mingia. No Mingia. No Mingia. That's no an Mingia. animal, but it's not a dino. No Mingia. No Mingia. It is N O M I N G I A. No Mingia. Not a dino. Not a dino. Kelly Reedy, do you think Nomingia is a dinosaur? Yeah, you heard me. I called you out, Kelly. Nomingia. Nomingia is actually, it is a dinosaur. Last but not least, you've already won. You've gotten, I think, yeah, you got eight already. Oh, I'm so Last relieved. Last but not least, one of my favorite dinosaur names. Oh, crap, I just gave it away. <laughs> All right, well, now you know it is a dino. It is the longest dinosaur name, Micropachycephalosaurus. Cephalosaurus. That is the longest dinosaur name. It is a real dinosaur, Micropachycephalosaurus. Christina, you won. Guess oh my what God. won. That was so stressful. It should be. We might play again soon. You know what you've won? What did I win? The right to be my co-host. Let's do this. All right, let's go, guys. We were talking about sauropods today. All right. Uh, I'm going to share my screen so we can see some beautiful sauropods. We're talking all about sauropods today. Here's a bunch of them. Stole this straight, I think, from Scientific American... A bunch of different uh, iterations of sauropod here. Sauropods are amazing, right? They got the long, they've got the long uh, na nails. Wow, they got the long tails. We got long necks. We actually, some of them were actually able to whip their tails with such force that it would be able to create a sonic boom, probably for defense mechanism, which is pretty bonkers. Um, other things that are crazy about them is they're giant and they're tiny. Well, not really tiny. Some sauropods were somewhat small. We're talking like 15 feet long versus up to almost 150 feet long. The largest animals that have ever walked the face of the earth, up to 100 tons in some of them. Huge, huge animals. Um, wow, I'm getting a lot of requests here. What else? The other really cool thing I think about sauropods is the pneumaticized bones, which means they're filled with air sacs and hollows. And that is one of the reasons why they're able to not only lift their heads and their necks up, uh, but be able to breathe through that entirely, incredibly long trachea and neck. They had a one-way unilateral flow of air, so they're always constantly getting oxygen rather than just breathing in and out. And that allowed them to live and survive, which is pretty bonkers. Um, they were also constantly replacing teeth, constantly. Some sauropods, we think, lost their teeth every two to three weeks, some every two to three months. So you're always losing sets of teeth, growing in new ones. Um, Someone in my co some, can a co-host make sure that Jacob Bob gets blocked? They keep on asking to get in. Um, what else? Oh, the other really cool thing here. Let me show you. If you guys look at this picture that you're looking at right now, you see Nigerosaurus down the bottom. It's one of the smaller ones. I'm going to zoom in on its face. Look at this thing's face, right? 
So one of the coolest adaptations, or one of the reasons we think that having a giant long neck was a great adaptation is that you can stand in one single spot and not expend a lot of energy to find food, right? You can stand in the one spot and then sweep your neck around. Basically this guy probably using his teeth almost like a lawnmower, just munching and munching and munching without moving their body. Great way to save energy while getting calories. We go back to this one. Some sauropods we know ate uh, more fibrous, harder foods. We can tell that based on their teeth, some softer, and probably they all exploited different levels of the canopy, like Nigerosaurus eating probably grass, low-lying plants, versus Brachiosaurus, or really tall ones, reach way up into the treetops. And that was a way that you can have different sauropods living at the same time, exploiting different ecological niches. Last cool thing I want to say about these guys, uh, here's a pretty cool picture of Brachiosaurus I saw when I was in France. Um, <laughs> they have, most of them have around 19 cervical vertebrae. Cervical vertebrae are the vertebrae of the neck, right? Most mammals have seven vertebrae in their neck, even giraffes. Long neck dinosaurs, 19 cervical vertebrae. These are the longest necks of any animal has ever existed. Now, we should probably mention, I should probably mention, if you are giant, like many of these guys, let me get a picture that has something for scale here. Let's say, let's go to this one. Let's say you are a giant sauropod. This is Titanosaur, Patagotitan. We'll get to that in a little bit. You are eating a literal crap ton of food every day, like up to a thousand pounds of food, right? And you've got to push that food once you digest it out your rectal aperture. Uh, my brother called it a defecation portal, like that name as well, right? But if you are eating this much food and you are using little peg-like teeth, here's the Titanosaur at the Museum of Natural History in New York. You see those peg-like teeth? There are no teeth in the back for grinding plant matter, right? So we're just clipping and swallowing. And so we think they had sacculated stomachs, much like some ruminants today, like cows, using bacterial aid to digest this literal crap ton, like literally a thousand pounds for some of these, of plant matter every day. And that produces a literal crap ton of farts and burps, right? You are, this is a giant walking copper light dispensary, basically, right? And so this thing is farting and burping, and there is good evidence to suggest that burps and farts, mostly burps, but burps and farts from long neck dinosaurs actually change the climate at the end of the Cretaceous period. Also, can you imagine being farted on by something this size? You could literally die. Like you could literally, it could literally kill you, quite possibly. So, all right, I'm going to come back here for a second. I know the real question on everyone's mind is about brontosaurus, right? Right? We, is brontosaurus real? It was real. Now it's back. It wasn't real. What's, what's going on with brontosaurus? What's the deal? So here's the deal. In 1877, uh, if you've heard of the Bone Wars, this is a whole part of the big Bone Wars saga. In 1877, uh, a patasaurus was found, described, named. Two years later, 1879, brontosaurus found, described, named. In 1903, only a couple years later, we realized we'd found enough um, brontosaurus and apatosaurus specimens to recognize that brontosaurus was probably just a subspecies or a type of apatosaur because apatosaurus had been named first. Uh, when it comes to scientific nomenclature, whichever is named and described and published first takes precedence. So Brontosaurus got demoted basically way back in 1903 to being a subspecies of Apatosaurus, right? Fast forward over 100 years, all the way until 2005, when now we have so many more specimens. We have a much larger sample size, and scientists actually looked at 477 different anatomical features across, across 81 individual sauropods, apatosaurus and brontosaurus, to step back and recognize, you know what? These two animals are different enough that they should both have their own genus and species name. So in essence, it was only about five years ago that brontosaurus was reborn in a sense and given its proper distinction as its own very own special dinosaur. So apatosaurus is real, brontosaurus is real. They're different, very slightly different, but closely related sauropods. So if anyone says brontosaurus doesn't exist, well, you know what? When it comes to dinosaur names, the more uh, specimens we have, the bigger sample size, the more accurate we can be with the naming. But yeah, brontosaurus is back, baby. And in fact, I'm going to show you a picture of one or two or maybe three, who knows, right about now. Um, quick reminder, here's your Ardonyx again. This is our, not our, this is our dino of a day, of the day. You guys want to make some amazing drawings of our Ardonyx here. Let's see. Let me see if I can find some more. Vronosauruses. Oh, here's one I painted on uh, someone's wall. That was pretty fun. That's one. Here's another Vronosaurus right here, or a Patasaurus. So this is a Patasaurus based off, or uh, this is the mock-up from Jurassic World, which I thought was pretty boring. It's just like this darkish, grayish, like not really detailed animal. This one I like a little bit better. 
again, we don't have evidence of this type of coloration, but it just seems to me to be slightly more accurate. I mean, most animals we see today have different coloration outside of maybe like elephants. So this one's pretty good. Uh, I like this a lot that we aren't sure if they were able to sit or not. And this one is actually laying an egg. We do know that giant sauropods laid eggs. We don't think they took care of their nests, like brooded nests of eggs, the way that like oviraptorids did, just because they weigh too much. And we think that, well, A, we haven't really found specimens around egg nests or clutches of eggs. We think they may have actually like been able or accidentally stomped on and broken eggs. So if you have a bunch of these giant things, little eggs rolling around, might be pretty dangerous. So we think they laid a bunch of eggs and then took off, let the babies fend for themselves. Uh, Dustin, let's pause for a question. Yes. Uh, we have one from M that says, I know giraffes have the same number of vertebrae as other animals. Did all sauropods have the same number of vertebrae as each other? Yeah, so 19. If our, I, I don't know if it's every single one of them, I'm pretty sure. If it's not everyone, it's almost everyone had 19 cervical vertebrae, which are the neck vertebrae. Yeah, which is obviously twice as much as any of the mammals today. It's pretty bonkers adaptation. Um, can someone block someone named Lorenzo, please? Mm -hmm. All right. So that was a Patasaurus and Brontosaurus. Now on to everyone's favorite dino from Jurassic World, uh, if you know what it is. Which is the sauropod name? Drop it in the comments if you know the sauropod name from Jurassic, I'm sorry, Jurassic Park. The original Jurassic Park, the sauropod they saw in one of the opening scenes, it sneezed on Lex. What do we got? Christina, does anyone know? Uh... Brachiosaurus is a guess. Brachiosaurus that I see is a very good guess. In fact, that is exactly what it is. Here's a mock-up of Brachiosaurus. This is a Brachiosaurus at the uh, Royal Gorge Dinosaur Experience. This is in Colorado. The cool thing about, a couple cool things about Brachiosaurus versus Apatosaurus and Brontosaurus. Look how flat this thing's back is. And its neck and its tail are almost horizontal versus Brachiosaurus, whose neck extends higher up, kind of like a giraffe. In, in fact, there's a subspecies of brachiosaurs called giraffe titans and that speaks to the fact that much like giraffes the front legs were longer than the back legs making the the spine kind of angle kind of angle up like a giraffe why is it not there we go kind of angle up like a giraffe uh again we think an adaptation to probably be able to reach foliage 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 higher up on the trees the other kind of weird and cool thing about brachiosaurs when we first found them people thought they lived in water Right? There's just no way that an animal this size could support its own weight on land. So we actually thought, and that coupled with the fact that it had nostrils on the top of its skull, we're like, oh, these guys definitely like walked around, waded in water. We know now that is absolutely not the case. Its legs were not, its legs were pillars allowing it to stand up on land. And also because of its pneumaticized bones, bones filled with air sacs and hollows, it was much lighter. That would have allowed it to actually be on land without having to have water take off, take off some of that burden of the weight. Okay, do we have any other questions, Christina, before we move on to our third and final major dino of the day? I got a question from Parker and Molly. They want to know, was Littlefoot from Land Before Time a sauropod? Yeah, Littlefoot, definitely. I don't know if they ever said it was Brontosaurus or Patasaurus, but yeah. Just a I, long neck a is the name they give it. Any uh, other questions? And then someone asked me how many vertebrae humans have. I just looked it up. It's 33. Okay, total? What is, how many cervical vertebrae? I think we have seven. Seven. Seven, okay, cool. 33 total, seven, seven cervical. Cervical, again, are neck vertebrae. Cool. Any others? Um, I don't have any more questions. Great, 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 great. Because it is time that we move on to the piece de resistance of our day. We've already mentioned a second ago. It is the Titanosaur Patagotitan. The nickname is Patagot I'm sorry, the nickname is Titanosaur. The ti sci scientific name is Patagotitan Mayorum, named for the region in Argentina where it was found. This is the model at the American Museum of Natural History. Um, when they found that's them- my favorite actually, dinosaur. What? And that's my favorite dinosaur. Number they found one. six individuals and 130 different bones, right? And so they could use the different ones they knew to piece together. It wasn't a complete skeleton, so some of these are uh, filled in based on close relatives. Like for instance, this head on the Titanosaur, we never found a head. This is a hypothetical head based on close relatives, but there was never a head found with these Titanosaurs in Argentina. Uh, but they were enormous. Like this guy is lying next to the femur, one of the femurs. Again, the femur is the bone, largest bone in your body, goes from your knee to your hip. This bone right here, this is the single largest individual fossilized bone ever discovered, ever. 
I mean, it's about eight feet tall. It's obviously bigger than this like six foot tall human. Enormous, enormous animals. Here's the mock-up I showed you guys a little bit ago. You can kind of see that person way down by the feet. Again, I'm glad he's in the front because if he was in the back and that thing farted, game over. Also, it, we don't know the exact length because the titanosaur you see right here at the American Museum of Natural History, not even fitting in the room it's in, it's about 122 feet long, but it was a juvenile. It wasn't fully grown. I think it was about, it was a teenager basically. So anywhere up to maybe 150 feet long, possibly. At about 100 tons, the heaviest, arguably the heaviest. There's a couple other long neck ones with less uh, complete skeleton, so it's harder to make the judgment. But this is amongst, if not the, amongst the largest animals who ever walked on land. It's only about, by the way, though, the weight is only about half of the weight of a whale, right? It's, it's wild to me to think that the largest animal that's ever lived, the blue whale, is alive today as we are alive as well. Blue whales are about 200 tons. Blue whales are shorter than the titanosaur. Blue whale is about 90 feet long. The titanosaur, like I said, 120, 140 feet. But there's not a lot of weight in the tail or the neck versus a blue whale. It's just like one big chunk of blubbery whale fuselage. So it weighs a lot more. Okay. Christine, do we have any other sauropod questions? I don't have any right now. Okay. That is perfectly fine. So uh, da, 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 here we go. So we talked about Apatosaurus versus Brontosaurus. We talked about sauropods, uh, Brachiosaurus, Titanosaur, um, Patago, Patago Titan. Uh, we did some Q&A. I like that we're keeping this a little bit shorter today. So Christina, Yes. Do you have any general questions about sauropods before we move on to check out some of these amazing drawings? I'm also going to check in on Instagram to see if there are any questions we missed up here. But go oh, ahead. I, just, I just got one from Ashley uh, okay. who, who said, when was the first Brachiosaurus bone found? And second question, what is an Ardonyx? Great question. So I'm not sure when the first Brachiosaurus bones were found. I'm not sure. I'm, a simple Wikipedia search can find that for you, Ashley, I'm sure. Uh, Ard did she, what is an Ardonyx? Was that the second one? What is our, well, this is, I just happen to have a pet Ardonyx just for, you know, some visual. This is an Ardonyx right here. An Ardonyx, again, is a basal sauropodomorph. <laughs> so again, basal means like early predecessor uh, and sauropod. We're talking about sauropods. Morph means shapes. This is like an early, somewhat shaped like a sauropod, sauropodomorph. So the hips and the back legs are similar. The tail, the neck is getting similar. The front legs are slowly getting a little bit longer. They're not quadrupedal yet, they're still bipedal. And this existed a couple of, quite a few million years before what, what you would see as a four-legged quadrupedal sauropod. Oh, one other thing I haven't mentioned, people don't really recognize, a lot of sauropods, or some had armor. We don't think of like armored sauropods, but some of them like Saltosaurus, for instance, the saltiest of all the dinosaurs, had a bunch of osteoderms, which are bony plates embedded in the skin, across its back and onto its tail. So we know there are actually some armored sauropods as well. So it's not just their size that they use as defense. They could use that tail as like a whip for defense. Um, and also some of them had armor, which is pretty cool. Pretty cool. Awesome. I have Actually, a couple. answer your question. <laughs> I have a couple more questions. Okay. Um, Cecilia Ceratops asked, are Brachiosaurus and Brontosaurus the same dinosaurs or different dinosaurs? Right. So we thought for a while Apatosaur Apatosaurus and Brontosaurus were the same. They are very similar. They're different. Brachiosaurus is very different than those two. Remember, Brontosaurus and Apatosaurus, their necks and their, their tails are a little bit more level, more horizontal, whereas Brachiosaur, much like Giraffe Titan, has those front legs longer like a giraffe, so its neck and its back kind of angles skyward more. That's an easy way to tell that difference. I've got a question. With its massive size, did carnivores still attack sauropods or just the juvenile or sick ones? I can't imagine that for the, like the massive, massive sauropods, I can't imagine they were attacked by any, any theropod, at least not like a small one. They're just like too, too big. Like you don't see, you don't see packs of lions often trying to attack an elephant. It's incredibly rare. They go after a giraffe. And if they do, it's usually a juvenile or one that's like wounded or old. So Maybe in, in rare circumstances uh, for the big ones, but probably not. Or and we don't know a lot about how coordinated pack hunting was in some theropods. So there's, it's possible that some of them kind of like teamed up to distract one of the moms, the bigger ones, and to be able to have some of the other ones take out a young, a juvenile or baby. I don't know. But it doesn't seem like I just can't imagine like a Deinonychus trying to take out an Apatosaur. They're just, 
one kick or one step and that dude's done for. Um, and we've also got a question. How could they tell there were air sacs from fossils? Because we have the bones, right? And we talked about fossilization that one day and how most, the two major ways things become fossilized. And one of the major ways is per mineralization, where you permanently mineralize the organic tissue, the organic, uh, the bone, right? So bones are organic, obviously they're made <laughs> from an animal. And so over time, minerals in the earth and the groundwater can actually seep into that organic material and replace it with inorganic material, basically replacing it, using it as a scaffolding to build an exact rock replica of it. And so you can still see all the holes and the air sacs and the hollows in those bones. And in fact, when you pick it up, it weighs less than like a bone of a similar size from a non-dinosaur, just because these bones were so much lighter. That's a great question. Uh, also, um, where did they mostly live? We have found some great question. We have found sauropods on literally every continent, including Antarctica. Again, at the time, much like M, where's M? Can you hold up your shirt? Can I get an M? Where is she gone? Is she here? She's got a Pangea shirt. Where's M? Did we lose her? I don't think she's on anymore. Hi, I'm here. Oh, there you are. <laughs> I can't find her. Yes. Ah. <laughs> there she is. All right. She's got a Pangea shirt. So during the time of the dinosaurs, the continents, uh, many of them, at least at the beginning of the time of the dinosaurs, they started to separate later on, were in one big supercontinent called Pangea. And most of that was a little bit farther north. So what we now know is Antarctica, there were times when it was like a swampy jungle. So yeah, we have found dinosaur fossils on literally every single continent, including Antarctica. We haven't found them on the moon yet. We'll see. We just haven't really been looking, right? Someone uh, asked, someone mentioned space at some, dinos in space. Like that's a, whole, that's a whole movie waiting to be written. Also, speaking of movies waiting to be written, humans, anatomically modern humans have been around 200,000 years not very much versus dinosaurs, which were around like 180 million years, 200,000 versus 180 million. So if aliens have ever actually visited this planet, it's much more likely they showed up during the time of the dinosaurs, right? And so someone needs to get on that screenplay because like aliens versus dinosaurs with lasers and UFO, like that is a movie I would go see. Um, so were sauropods mostly in herds or loners? Uh, we have trackways that show them walking together. We don't, I'm not sure exactly how big the herds got, but we know that some of them moved and lived together. It's probably species dependent too, right? Some types of sauropods moved in herds, some didn't. Not, I'm not really sure. That's a really good question. I don't know too much about sauropod trackways. I know some did. In fact, the uh, Patasaur at the American Museum of Natural History, it is mountain, it's mounted, uh, you can take this catwalk kind of above it. So you're right at like vertebrae level. And if you look under, there's a bunch more vertebrae under you, as well as the footprints of a sauropod that we found. I think it's in Texas, Glen, Glen Rose, somewhere in Texas we found those. So not only do you see the skeleton, you see the, the footprints as well. We have a question from Richard who asked, do you believe the Armagosaurus, which I hope I said right, had sails or just used its spines as a rattle for communication? Those, are you talking about like, yeah, so it had those, can you look up a picture of that, Christina, so we can get it up on the screen? I think you're talking about one of the many sauropods. I wonder if there's one in my images here. No, I have it up on my, just the- Yeah, quick those weird now. neural spines coming out the back. We're still not exactly sure what those were used for. Um, I don't think they would be able to shake them to make sound. I've never heard that. I thought they were too stiff for that, I'm not sure. But yeah, the coloration may have been for mating displays or to scare predators. Um, not really sure. Don't really, don't really know. Or maybe I've got a question. that's always the other option. Maybe helping it dissipate heat. That's one reason some people think sauropod necks evolved to be that long, to be able to have more body mass that is uh, with blood vessels near the skin. So you have a lot of um, breezes and cool air that's hitting that and cooling off the entire giant body. This big body produces a lot of heat. So yeah, we're not sure. So I've got a question. What led to Giraffe, Titan, and Bronchiosaurus becoming different species? We've talked about this a couple of times. So even animals alive today, you can't have animals, animals that are almost identical doing the identical thing in the identical environment, right? There's just not, we all have to find, we all, different animals have to find their own ecological niches, places they can survive and eat and reproduce safely, right? And if you have a bunch of one species, it's already let's say feeding from the tree, the canopy treetops, if you're that tall and there's no food up there, like it's not gonna work out. 
So over time, different animals evolved to be able to exploit different ecological niches, different types of food, different types of environment. And that I think, and those different environmental pressures on different types of animals is exactly what leads to natural selection and evolution and speciation, where you get different types of animals utilizing different environments in different ways. I think we should do one more question and then I am incredibly excited to see these drawings. Um, I have a question that says, sauropod dinos like Brachiosaurus were thought to be mammals according to Robert Baker. What's your perception of that? So, Backer. Backer. Oh, this person's yeah. called it. So, Backer thought that sauropods were mammals? I didn't know that. Interesting. So, your perception of that is that Backer is That's, wrong. Yeah, that seems weird and wrong because we didn't have any mammals. Near, we had some mammals towards the end of the Cretaceous, and they were pretty small. So, that seems pretty wild. I've never heard that. Backer is one that, uh, if you guys remember when we did Deinonychus, and I showed you that drawing, Deinonychus, that drawing was from Backer, that first crazy, fleshed out, scary, warm-blooded, active predator, Deinonychus. So that's strange to me that Backer would say mammals. I don't know. I'll look into we it. got one more really good question, and then we can do the images. So Lauren wants to know, during seasonal changes, hmm. do we know if sauropods migrated or hibernated? Hibernate? Oof, wow. Good question. Hibernation, I don't think so. I don't know. No one's ever asked me about dinosaurs hibernating. That makes a lot of sense for some of the larger ones. I don't know exactly how that would work. Migration, probably. I mean, I think when it comes to giant sauropods, again, they need a literal crap ton of food every day. So I would imagine they're, it's not really a seasonal migration. I'd imagine they're constantly, I guess, mini migrating because you're always having to move to new environments to get new food because they were a lot of them and they were big and they're eating a lot. Whether or not that there was a specific seasonal migration, I mean, it stands to reason, maybe, uh, but again, they don't move very fast, right? A lot of things, we think about migratory birds, they can cover ground and cover air pretty quickly. But these sauropods like Brontosaurus, it's not like you could walk or run any faster than, I don't know, like five miles per hour, tops maybe 10. So it's not really moving very quickly. Um, but may, I don't know. I love, I love where you guys are heads are at because you're thinking about modern corollaries, things that happen with animals alive today and trying to apply those same ideas and hypotheses to animals that haven't been around for millions of years. And that is why dinosaur science is amazing and a great enigma because there's always more for us to question and guess and discover and learn together. On that note, I would love to discover your amazing... <laughs> My mom just texted me, what is a literal crap ton? Well, mom, so crap is a synonym for... Uh, well, poop, right? I know I, you may have read to me the book, Everybody Poops at one point, and animals are no exception. And so if crap is a synonym, synonym for poop, uh, a ton is about 2,000 pounds, metric ton. And so when I say a literal crap ton, I mean this animal may have literally pooped almost 2,000 pounds worth of food a day. Probably not quite that much, uh, but you know, it's fun to extrapolate when we talk about poop, things coming out of the This one's for you, Kelly. I, I wanted to make sure I kept this PG. So today, I wanted to mention the crap ton. I wanted to mention the coprolite dispensary, a defecation portal, as well as the rectal aperture. Those are my three nicknames. Uh, that's for you, Kelly Reedy, who is a theoretical physicist and one of the most mature people I know. Christina, can we see some of these pictures? Let's bring up some of these pictures. I'm, I'm going to scroll through the... Ooh, Rob. I like Rob's. I like that, Rob. That looks good. It's kind of got that chunky body in the middle. I'm into that. Juno M has N. color and oh. calligraphy. Do we have the same glasses, M? Let's see, cats. Ooh, cat night. Oh, this one's green with a lot of speckles. I like that you explored different colors. Bryn, what do we got? Oh, oh, wow. That one looks real good. I like that. I like that one. It's mouthy and looks. <laughs> I should. I love that the mouth is very like Pac-Man like, and that's actually kind of accurate for sauropods. Like these things weren't chewing; their mouths were, and their skulls were incredibly reduced in size and weight, be able to be held on the end of that long neck. So they're basically just plucking food, like literally just Pac-Manning it and swallowing it. Juno and Jen, that looks awesome. I love the long tail horizontally balancing out the long horizontal neck. Look, Look at, at that. Can we see Margos right now. Wow, Margos looks great. Oh, Margo with right. the shading. Uh, Jada, here we go, Jada. Nice, nice. Into it. <laughs> oh, shout out to T. T's got two dinos here. Maybe that was a dino of the day yesterday. 
Look at Richards. Richards looks great. I like that. I got the person for scale. I love that you remember yesterday we said if without something for scale, it's just not good science. Because if there wasn't that person there, Richard, like that thing could be, I don't know, the size of a bus. It could be the size of a cat. We don't know. Richard crushing the game. Mary Beth. Ooh, look at that. I like I, I, like I can see the claws. We didn't talk about sauropod claws today. I should have mentioned that. Uh, most sauropods had three or four claws on their hind feet. And then just one claw, a thumb claw on their forelimbs. So on those front arm leg, arm legs, I guess they're not arms, they're legs. The four legs, the four limbs had one thumb claw, thumb spike, uh, whereas the hind feet had three or four claws. I love that you guys have included that. It looks great there. Let's see. Parker and Molly have drawings up as well. And they those, have, those it looks like good. I like we got the blue sky stable. in that one. Uh, my mom looking like someone straight out of the Matrix. I'm into it. Uh, let's, <laughs> what's up mom? Ooh, Cecilia, Ceratops, that looks real good. I like the little arms. Uh, it appears as though you have those wrists facing in. Remember dinosaurs were clappers, not slappers. I'm into it. Amanda Bart, uh, oh, I thought that was a drawing. That's a laptop, but hi, Amanda. <laughs> Julian, Julian, what do you got other than a very cool shirt on? Julian, did you draw it? No. Where's that? Do you know where that shirt's from? Can you write where that shirt's from in the chat? Because I love that. I want it. We got more. Taisha, let's see. Taishi. Nice. You even labeled it. Very good. I like that. I like the little toe claws in the back. Do we have any other drawings? Natty. Oh, Megan's back. Natty, that looks good. I like the different coloration. We just don't know their color, so have at it. It's wildly speculated away on coloration. Megan, uh, there's your backdrop. There is our Brachiosaurus. Can I see your shirt today? Another, I have not seen that Jurassic Park shirt. You guys, you guys are crushing the sartorial game. Alicia, oh, you did a digital drawing. Alicia, that is real good. I like that. I like those four limbs almost touching the ground. Ryan and Sydney. Oh, we've got a whole bunch of things going on here. We got our tonics. We got human for scale. I like that you're walking it much like I did. That one, I like the jaunty leg. It looks like it's doing like a, I don't even know, like a weird two-step situation. I'm into it. All right, I think that's most of our drawings. Uh, we should probably start with, or end with the best artist the world has ever produced. Christina, I gave you like a 15 minute head start on this this morning. Can we see your Ardonix? Um, yeah, you guys, buckle up for the level of detail. There you go. Well, that's pretty good, I like Thank that. Thank you, thank you for the applause. Um, I was too busy with Dino Facts to give this dino uh, a body, so. Can you give it a mouth? I can. And a and, human for scale. And it can smile. Right. And, and you're going to get a couple extra points because you did win dino or not a dino. Um, did you, I'm just curious, fam, did you guys like the dino or not a dino game? Because if so, I might just pick a random person in the chat room every day to play that with to get our, get the ball rolling. Did you guys like that? Head nods. My mom's thumbing up. We got a lot of thumbs up. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Nice. That's good, Christina. Can you make sure that uh, the person is six feet away, though? We want to make sure we're practicing safe social distancing with respect to dinosaurs and human yeah. beings. I think Ceratopsians tomorrow. What do you think? Spiky Saturday? Spiky Saturday. Spiky Saturday. Ceratopsians. All right. Ceratopsians tomorrow. Uh, like always, you guys, please share on Twitter. I'm Dustin, at Dustin Groick on Instagram, at Dinosaur Whisperer, Whisperer. Share all these images, share with your friends that we're doing this. Um, I would love to bump up and buy the next level of Zoom so we can have even more people and have more uh, chat monitoring controls. So if you want to throw me a couple bucks on Venmo uh, or PayPal, hit me up. It will go straight to supporting this every single day. Um, and just note, people are asking about um, past sessions they're all on dustin's youtube page so you can see those Catch what is up the name on of YouTube your, Grace? um dino of the day drawings um oh we had a request for furry friday i don't think i don't know any dinosaurs that had maybe feathery friday yeah. um no but as we're closing out here if you have other science topics or groups of animals you want to talk about drop them in the comments because i know a lot of really cool science communicators like we had jason ward on who's the bird nerd um, I would love to have them on and nerd out about this stuff. I have a friend who is a big cat scientist. I know like Tiger King is at the forefront of everyone's mind. Uh, so if you guys want me to get Carol Baskin to be a co-host, just, no, I'm kidding. It's not Carol Baskin. 
It's not, it's not Carol Baskin. Uh, it's someone else. Study snow leopards. So put those in the box as well. Um, but I think we're just about out of time, which means, you guys, tomorrow we're going to do Spiky Saturday with Ceratopsians. Heck yeah. Yeah. So if you're trying to learn more about Ceratopsians or simply dig in the ground to make a clutch of eggs, I would say never stop digging. That's for all of you. All right, guys. Tomorrow, Ceratopsians, Spiky Saturday. Tell your friends. Uh, and, you know, just make sure that you maintain a very clean rectal aperture. I love you guys. Peace out. We'll see you tomorrow. Never stop loving dinosaurs. Bye, Mom. I'll see you tomorrow, too, in the flesh. Quarantine is over. Yay! Well, just family quarantine. Stay at home. Stay six feet away from each other. Uh, all my co-hosts, thank you. Thank you, guys. If you want to be a co-host, you know, and you're here every day, I might make you one, like Augustine. You might be the next co-host. Why not? You're an amazing artist. I'll see you guys soon. Peace out. Bye. 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 Bye.